Welcome to an artist life. I live by the sea in New England, and I love to share my quiet, simple life of art and garden and home. So I hope you will feel that you can come and join me. Welcome to an artist life. It's a lovely, somewhat foggy, bit overcast day. There's Algernon and his lovely wife on the flat rock, though they won't be for long because the tide is coming in. So I thought today I would share with you something fun I like to do, especially during this time thinking of gardens and things. But as the tide goes out, there's always, especially on an overcast day like this, because it's nice and cool down here, and we can find all the lovely varieties of seaweed we have and see how they're hooked to rocks. It's a beautiful variety. And look at this one. Isn't that beautiful? So we'll take that one. Let's see if we can find a red one. Maybe heading down closer to the shore. Yes, and see, here's a lovely one. And then heading down, because we have to get seawater, of course. Ah, oh, yes. Here's a lovely red one. Hook to a rock. See that beautiful color? Oh, this is a lovely one here. Look at how beautiful that is. It's like little hearts and that's full of seawater because of course it has to conserve that. Look at that beautiful russet gold. So what I like to do is just come down and gather up a few bits and bobs of different seaweeds hooked to rocks. And then we'll take them back to our sitting room, maybe the plant room, just around the house, dotted on windowsills, and fill little jars with seawater and make little seascapes. Now, of course, I won't leave them longer than maybe a day or two, and then we bring them back, because otherwise they wouldn't be very happy and they would start to die. And no one loves the smell of rotting seaweed. Well, I kind of do. Oh, look at this, it's lovely. Here's an old one I'm showing you. The, uh, and I'm showing you uh, the gulls eating. Th these spider crabs are, they love these things. So this isn't a, so however I find their shells, their carcasses, when they have their little heads and they look alive, but they're light, I know they've naturally shed their shells and I'll keep those. But this little fellow, of course, found his end by being picked up like this by a gull or some bird and dropped to the rocks. But such is life give and take. And then this carcass will rot away and become food for this beautiful grass. And soon little crabs, fiddler crabs, will come out and eat their remnants of it. And circle around will be some periwinkle snails. And they'll all have their feast. And then our little friend won't have died in vain. So, as you can see, to me, this is just a vast garden. It's like <laughs> nature's garden center. And you can see how beautiful it looks right now. Now, if it were a bit warmer, I would have my goggles on and my mask. And sometimes I love to just lay down in the sea like this and just watch and feel the movement of this seagrass. And then little shoals of fish will swim about and find you. So. And maybe we'll grab a couple of rocks with barnacles on to put in our little arrangement. So, yes, let's have today's short little vlog be following me around as I gather things for little sea arrangements, I call them. Look how beautiful it is to see the movement as the tide's coming in, so see how quickly it's moving. to the depths here and we happily do it sometimes but today it's a bit chilly so we'll gather our treasures 
our beautiful collection of different colored seaweeds and find some random jars, jam jars, old vases, anything that's clear and we'll make some little arrangements. Okay, let's head back up with our treasures. One last look at the tide coming in because in a few hours we'll be looking out here and this bit of the beach will be quite under the sea. But then we'll have more of our feathered friends, the plovers and the cranes coming to fish. They love to fish all this grass through here. I think we're quite lucky that we have the grass on this side. On that side is the smooth sand, which is lovely for bathing and sunbathing in. But I like that we have the grass on our side of the beach because we get so many more animals and it's so much more interesting to snorkel in. But yet it's an easy walk or swim across our bay. And I often do that. In fact, swimming across is pretty much what I do every day in the warm season. And then you can lay in the sand or come back and swim through the grass. All right, let's grab our treasures and head up. So let's gather up our treasures, and although this will be a fun diversion, let's not forget, today we have to do artwork. So I think I will share with you today's latest sketch. Let's head on up. So today we're working on a sweet little animal, and uh, I'm going to be sketching out the shapes here, and today's animal is going to be a sweet little otter. I like to draw otters, I just find them really sweet. and. Uh, they are water animals, so I kind of feel akin with them. And here you can see in my usual way, I have multiple layers. The really rough layers where I start with shapes and such, and then I can turn off various layers to work on just the otter or just the teacup, because of course this otter is enjoying tea. And I think I will probably be putting a sort of a decorative motif, and I'm basically inspired by the um, arrangement we made the other day with my magnolias, so I thought it would be fun to put uh, magnolia flowers in this somehow. I roughly played with the idea on the teacup, but here you can see I'm kind of sketching out on the rough layer, sort of a pattern of where, where I would like it to be, and it sort of made sense um, for me to kind of put it off to the upper right because then it sort of balances the lower right where his tail the otter's tail goes on to the lower left of the canvas, so you kind of have that movement from upper right to lower left. And then here I am starting with uh, just undercoating, and I wanted it to have the pinks and the, the springy pinks and, gr and blues and greens of uh, spring, and also the pinks inspired by the magnolia blossoms, which have that beautiful blush pink. So of course, as I often do with my um, animals, they aren't necessarily going to be colored in any necessarily realistic way. But I still like to go back in, and uh, now that I have my pink undercoat, I can decide where I'm putting the shadow and the light, and where I want to play with uh, that kind of depth of, uh, of light and dark. Putting in the bluey greens for the teacup, playing with the, uh, the blush pinks in the magnolia blossoms. And then of course uh, I need to do a background, so here I'm doing my chalk in a lovely green. Now even though this is in a different layer, because the uh, other layer with the blossom um, and the otter and the teacups are still semi-transparent, the green will still come through. So later on I will go back in with a digital eraser and sort of erase out some of the color. But I like to do that as well because I feel sometimes that erasing with the color sort of highlights and gives a sort of a graphic design to the creature, so I like to uh, play with that quite a bit. And then once you do that, having that opened up area, I then like to go back in with another color underneath, particularly like a pop of yellow to kind of give that bright line a little bit of a, a, a spark and it almost gives a glow to the painting. And there we have the otter, the teacup, and the magnolia blossom. A good day of work if I do say so myself. Now before we get back to our sea treasures and our sea arrangements, 
Let's take a look at the heron who returned to the spitting rock today. So the blue skies have returned, but the wind is picking up and blowing in dark clouds, and it blew away our foggy, calm morning. So good thing we gathered our treasures when we did. And here we see my final window ledge sea landscape arrangement by just filling up clear jugs with seawater and mixing in houseplants and other sea treasures. And of course, my mermaid statue. I have a lovely little window ledge seascaped arrangement. Now I will enjoy this today and through tomorrow and then I will set the kelp and any microorganisms in the seawater free. But for today, with tea time fast approaching, I shall sit here and enjoy the lovely look of the sun streaming through the glass, holding little moments of the sea and the kelp and the seaweed. And I will call this a day well spent and time well invested, enjoying my seaside arrangements. And I hope you enjoyed today's simple little vlog. And now as the day is ending, the wind is up and the tide is up. Let's quickly run outside so I can show you how high this, the tide has got. And here you can see the tide is quite high and the wind is coming in the new direction. And see how there's little bits of blue sky and the sun is quite out, but where we were wandering and gathering our treasures now the sea has returned. Of course, it's missing a few of its compatriots, which are now in the jars and the window ledge of the house. But they'll return to them tomorrow. So we have the sun over there and a storm blowing over here. I hope you enjoyed today's vlog. Please remember to like and subscribe. And I shall see you in the comments. And for those of you who are on my Patreon, I shall see you in the village. And remember, stay creative. Cheers. Mm -hmm.